Today is July 6th. It's Monday of the 14th week in Ordinary Time. And our prayers in Give Us This Day begin on page 75. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 114 Alleluia When Israel came forth from Egypt, the house of Jacob from a foreign people, Judah became God's holy place, Israel the Lord's domain. The sea beheld them and fled, the Jordan turned back on its course, the mountains leapt like rams, and the hills like yearling sheep. Why was it sea that you fled, that you turned back Jordan on your course? O mountains that you leapt like rams, O hills like yearling sheep. Tremble, O earth, before the Lord, in the presence of the God of Jacob, who turns the rock into a pool and flint into a spring of water. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Tonight's reading comes from the letter to the Hebrews. What more shall I say? I have not time to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and, of, and the prophets, who by faith conquered kingdoms, did what was righteous, obtained the promises. They closed the mouths of lions, put out raging fires, escaped the devouring sword. Out of weakness they were made powerful became strong in battle, and turned back foreign invaders. Women received back their dead through resurrection. The world was not worthy of them. Yet all of these, though approved because of their faith, did not receive what had been promised. God had foreseen something better for us so that, without us, they should not be made perfect. The Word of the Lord. How many of you were surprised to hear the name Barak in tonight's excerpt from the letter to the Hebrews? Barak was called by God to a particular military campaign by way of the prophetess Deborah. He wouldn't accept the call to service unless Deborah joined him. She agreed, but because of his resistance, she prophesied that a woman would ultimately win the battle. Not him and not her. Yael, the wife of a new ally, eliminated Sisera, the enemy leader, not Barak. The story is a bit gory, but you can find it in the fourth chapter of the Book of Kings. You might go back and read about Deborah, too, especially since the author of the letter to the Hebrews can easily name six pivotal Old Testament men but doesn't mention any of the equally important women. But I'm digressing from the real reason for the brief excerpt tonight. To my mind, 
the book we call <clears throat> Hebrews is a long exposition of God's most remarkable prophetic and salvific act, setting aside divine prerogative in order to become human, speaking to us finally and definitively through the God-man, Jesus Christ. Now we believe that the Old Testament heroes and heroines, because of their commitment to God, found a place in eternal life. You and I, however, have been given Jesus Christ, God's best, most complete gift, God's incarnation, the sole mediator, the last sacrifice. And for that great gift, we bear a greater responsibility to be faithful as Christ was faithful, to be just as Christ was just, and despite our human limitations and sinfulness, to strive each day by words and actions to become perfect in holiness, and to tell other people about Christ. Few, if any, of us will become as famous as Barak or Gideon or Samuel or even Deborah. But fame is not our goal. Life forever with Christ is. Courage, your faith has saved you. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Courage, your faith has saved you. Liberating God, in Jesus you lead us from the bondage of sin and death to the gladness of eternal life. In hope we pray, gracious God, hear us. Help us to trust you in our experiences of transition and change. Gracious God, hear us. Strengthen us to respect and consider those whose ideas or attitudes differ from ours. Gracious God, hear us. Give everlasting peace and joy to those who have died with their hope fixed on you. Gracious God, 
hear us. And for what else might we pray tonight? In hope we pray, gracious God, hear us. Now we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. May the God of everlasting love bless us with all peace and joy in believing. Through Jesus, our brother. Amen. Have a peaceful night.